Greetings from the distortion world, and I give blessings to you all from Lord Giratina himself. I am Dunn Sparse of the distortion world, and I am here because Honorary Sparse said I needed to be here. Which I am thankful for, because it gets boring in the distortion world. I mean, plotting for the demise of the smug llama goat is kind of what we do, but it gets old after a while. And we'd like to torment the souls of mortals somehow. And with these stories, that is very much possible. <laughs> anyway, our first tale is the old chateau secret. Now, we are going to use this poor soul by the name of Dave to read the story. Forgive his sarcasm because we are possessing him to read his memories. <clears throat> We have all played Pokemon at least once in our lives, or at the very least heard of it. We all hear of how nice the world of Pokemon is, and how fun it is. However, Dave is a pessimistic little boy because apparently he learned the secret of the old chateau, or should I say a rickety old house deep in the internal forest of the Sinnoh region. He could have ignored it. But he didn't. Curiosity got the better of him, and that has spelled his downfall. <laughs> anyway, the truth of one of the most gruesome incidents in Pokemon history begins now. Cindy Arsenault was a young girl who lived in the mansion owned by her father, Leonidas Arsenault, and their graying butler, Chives. Chives was not a good butler because he was a boring old man that would not keep Cindy company. Despite this, Cindy was a sweet young girl who loved her father very much, but was often very lonely due to her father being busy constantly and as for mention, Chives being a jerk. Poor little girl. But that's okay, because Lord Giratina has been so kind to send her a friend. In fact, all she truly wanted was a friend. And being generous like he is, Lord Giratina granted the girl her wish when a peculiar Pokemon appeared in front of her as she was watching TV in an upstairs bedroom. The name of which she discovered was Rotom. Yes, this is gonna be good. <laughs> I mean, on with the story. Delighted, she played with her new friend daily, discovering Rotom's shape-shifting abilities. Together, they would prank Chives as revenge for him being a bad butler and not being a good friend. Cindy would have the Pokemon transform into household appliances and shock the butler when he attempted to use them. The butler would laugh warmly as Cindy came running out of hiding shouting, I got you! I got you! And that was how the butler no longer became a jerk. However, there's more to the test. It was on the day of Leonidas's one wedding anniversary that the incident occurred. Leonidas's wife, Victoria, had died during childbirth, and he had a grudge against his daughter, even though it was not her fault. Of course it wasn't her fault, you dick. So why are you having a grudge against her, huh? If it wasn't her fault, you're a jerk. I hope you burn in the lowest level in the distortion world. In fact, I'll make sure to have some mighty Enas and Houndooms burn your corpse while you're here. Yes. Anyway, she could always fill his cold stares at her turn back, but she loved him to pieces regardless. Such a good kid. Too bad that she has a jerk of a father. The two, this peculiar day, in particular, Leonidas longed for his wife to be by his side. He sat at his long dinner table, 
downing enough wine to quench the thirst of a room of governors. They must be very big drinkers. Okay, well, we'll get the drunkest governors in a room, and then we'll assume that's how much he drank. But then he died because of alcohol. Okay, he didn't die, but he got drunk. Another glass for you, Victoria. He would bellow and bouch. Bouch. Yes. I am simulating his drunkenness as he burps. Chisels upstairs. Tucking a blanket over the shoulder of a sleeping Cindy when he heard the drunken shout of his master from downstairs. Chives, come downstairs at once. Recognizing the drunk and wobble of Leonidas's voice, Chives switched the life off in Cindy's room and hurried downstairs. Within the dining room, the butler found the master of the house reduced to a drunken mass of limbs sprawled across the wine-stained dining room table. Chives smiled gently before speaking. Yes, Mr. Arsenault, you drunk slob. The man slowly lifted his head his forehead wrinkled and his cheeks red and sweaty. I'm hungry. Make me a steak. Yes, sir. How would you like your steak cooked? Chives is a very good cook. He may be a jerk in terms of having no light mood before Rodham's pranks, but he was a damn good butler otherwise. Anyway, Leonidas groaned. Reaching for a glass, knocking it over, and frowning at the clatter of it hitting the table and spilling its contents over his already soiled pants. He pissed himself! <laughs> yes. He glared up the butler with glazed eyes. Go do it! So, apparently, he is too drunk to specify what rarity he wants his meat. So he just wants a steak. Probably at his rate, meat of rare, because he's so hungry and all. But who knows. Chives knew that Leonidas had an unpredictable temper, even when he was sober and did not want to take any chances. Of course, sir. I will be back momentarily with your food. When Chives returned to the dining hall, Leonidas was even further drunk. Because apparently, all he could do was drink wine that was enough for like 10 drunk governors with drinking problems. But alas, Chives set the plate of food in front of the man. I hope you enjoy it, sir. Leonidas slowly put a piece of meat in his mouth. In his mouth. Seriously, the writer repeated that. <laughs> Your writing amuses me, Dave. And chewed before spitting it to the poor butler's face. What a shout! He grabbed the plate with the remaining steak and threw it against the wall behind him. It was horrible! I had too much wine and I can't taste anything! Ah! The noise of shattering porcelain traveled up the stairs and woke Cindy. She stumbled downstairs, blurry-eyed, to find her father shouting at chives. My fucking steak was supposed to be well done, you fucking idiot! But you were hungry, so he gave you a medium rare. Dad, what's wrong? Leonidas turned to see his daughter, staring at him with wide eyes. A smaller version of her mother in every respect. His voice was tight. Go to your room, sweetheart. I'm talking to Chives. Just talking. Oddly enough, he was nice here. 
something odd for a guy that's supposed to have a grudge against her. But this is bound to change, because he is a drunk. Anyway, Cindy narrowed her eyes, looking at the state of the dining room. The spilled booze, the smashed plates, the steak's juice running down the wall, the steak knife still clutched in her father's shaking hand. Cindy ran to the butler and wrapped his arms around his leg. No, I am not going to live. Leave. Maybe you're not going to live, because this guy's batshit crazy. Leonidas looked at her, and then up at Chives. Go to your room, Sydney. Cindy! No! Despite being drunk, he was able to remember his daughter's name, even though he did mistakenly call her Cindy at first. Sydney. Anyway, his eyes darkened, and his voice became louder. He advanced towards her and grabbed her by the wrist. Go to your room now, you little bitch! You're hurting me! She cried. Leonidas smacked her across the face, and after the initial shock, she began to cry. I told you he was a dick! Looking down at her, his face softened, and he began to move closer to her again, but Chives moved in front of her, into his path. Please do not harm the girl anymore, Master. You were a dick when you drunk. Get the fuck out of my way! He reached into his pocket and summoned his Typhlosion. Typhlosion, how dare you! How dare you turn- How dare you serve this bastard! But anyway, as Pokemon do, they have to serve whoever owns them. And Typhlosion was ordered to get them out of his way. The beast released a burst of flame from its mouth. Cindy ran and the Pokemon directed its attack towards the sudden movement. With a flash, Cindy's white nightgown was alight. The light cotton acted as quick ammunition to the flames as it crawled up her body. She was screaming, screaming and batting at her dress and screaming. Leonidas quickly realized what he had done. Yes, because apparently he thought it was smart to attack his own daughter with his prized Pokemon. That's what you get for being drunk, asshole. Running towards his daughter and attempting to put out the flames, consuming her body. Yeah, well, you could just summon a Feraligator and use Water Gun. Yeah, that would work quicker, but no, you're a dumbass. I mean Venusaur. I mean Venusaur. He grabbed the closest liquid and doused her with it. The fire <laughs> blazed brighter and Cindy screamed louder. I guess he wasn't the smartest knife in the drawer because wine is flammable. In the sense of alcohol anyway. What are you doing you dumbass? Chives yelled, shoving the shock Leonidas to the side. Tearing and ripping at the burning nightgown, Chive soon found it was too late. Cindy's screaming ceased. Her body fell limp in the butler's arms. Is she okay? Leonardo sighed. Cindy? Leonidas is a dick. And that is why I missaid his name, but who cares? The little girl's arms were burned black, her legs a raw, aching red. Her mouth was still open, wide in the picture of agony. Cindy! 24 hours later, or should we say the next day, the door of Arsenault's chateau was broken down by a group of authorities. The smell of wine, blood, and burnt flesh hit their noses. They had been tipped off by a man who could barely speak through his sobbing. Two people are dead in this mansion in the woods near Et Eterna. Inside of the house, they could hear the soft humming of a Pokemon crying. Following the noise, they walked into the dining hall. A wine-soaked table, a chandelier, an orange Pokemon overing 
hovering over a spot on the floor, humming quietly as it stared down at something. On the floor lay a girl, burnt, black and red from her legs to her neck, almost in the shape of a dress. Her eyes were closed, as with her mouth. There were tears streaked down her face. Three feet away from her lay an elderly man, a steak knife lodged in his throat. He was dressed in a typical butler's attire. To this day, nobody has in inhabited the old chateau except for Pokemon. Rumors say that Cindy and Chive still lurk through the rooms of the chateau, lost, looking for a way out. It is said that Rotom still plays with Cindy by turning into the television to prank Chives. I got you! I got you! Like I said, Chives redeemed himself near the end, but the father will be sentenced to the worst punishment the distortion world has to offer him for killing such a sweet little girl. See, even Lord Giratina has his passionate side. No kid should have to die due to a drunk. And with that, this tale is over. I hope you all enjoyed this little tale and hopefully are eager for more. I am done sparse of the distortion world, thanking you for your time. As Henri Sparse would say, take care, farewell, Love from the Henry Sparse Army. How done, Sparse? Later, everybody.